What's going on, everybody? My name is Chris the Cast Gamer, and I am your coach for the St. John Sharpedos. This is the UPBA Season 5, Weeks 2, 3, and 4. Uh, re I guess you could call it replay analysis. The videos aren't live. I know. Hold on before you guys get before before you guys get into anything. I just want to say that the timing for these particular videos have been. I'm gonna fix my camera a little bit because that's irking me just a tad bit. Uh, the, the the timing for the the timing for these has just been. Uh, fix it again. The timing for recording these videos were just bad. Whether it was extremely late at night, I had to do the uh, I had to do the battles like immediately after work. Basically, the timing just wasn't there for me to uh, for me to do my whole setup and actually like sit down and record it. So I'm doing a triple feature replay analysis for you guys. Week week two against Bru against uh, Bruno and the Chernobyl Dragalge. Week three against Orange of the um, Frederick Klefkies and our week five match against uh, the gamer seven 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 seven. So I have the replay on one side. I got my notes on the other. And what's going to happen is that I'm basically just going to read. I'm going to read off my notes, and we're going to watch the replay. And and if you guys want to, if you guys want to give me any. I won't say give me any tips, but if you guys have any suggestions uh, or things that I could ha I could have done in a certain situation, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys are excited that Draft League Battles are back on the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you guys don't miss out on any videos and give this video a like because your guys' support and I know I'm clapping a lot because I'm excited. For posting UPBA videos again, it's been so long. And uh, and leave the and like I said, leave this video a thumbs up because your guys' support, you guys have no idea that your support is greatly appreciated uh, here on the Chris Cast Gamer channel. And uh, yeah, so we're going to move on. First is our week two match against Bruno of the Chernobyl uh, Dragalge. So before we even move on, I just want to say that actually no, you know what? No, we are we are just gonna we're we're just gonna play it right now, and I'm just gonna start talking. So we're hitting play here. Um, the way that I had my team set up this, the way that I had my team set up was that he has a whole stall team, and. I have, and because of uh, Espeon, as well as because of uh, Prankster on Mega Vanet, I ran tons on both of them because I because where I know he is a Stallman, I know uh, he's all about statusing, he's all about recovering. So I had ton on both Espeon and Mega Vanet. Uh, to basically make sure that he doesn't do anything against me, but you know because he because he's the mass because in the UPBA he's the master of stall. He knew he knew that I was going to be running taunt on ever uh, that basically anything that I I would be running taunt. So unfortunately, he read me the entire game. And sadly, I couldn't really do much anything about it. Um, and yeah, so unfortunately, we ended up. Now I know the replay. I know the replay is still going on. I'm not even watching the replay at this point. Um, because I just, it was because the the game was just bad. I, uh, if I remember right, this game ended up being like a 5-0. I think I, I think I only end up, ended up only taking one of his mods out. But that's besides the point. Uh, he knew exactly what I was gonna do for every. Anyway, 
it is what it is. Uh, we're just gonna let the we're gonna let the replay play out and did that blissy though. The blissy. I I I don't know why, but when it comes to playing when it comes to playing against um, stall based teams, I don't know why, but I just can't. Not that I can't wrap my head around it. It's more so that I don't know why I can't play against it. I can't counter that kind of uh, that kind of playstyle. No matter how off, no matter how often I try. And I will say though, kudos to Bruno uh, for actually reading the fact that I had ta taunt on both Espeon and uh, and Bennett. Or at least I'm pretty sure I had. I know I had it on Bennett because you know prank because prankster Mega Bennett and Taunt is fantastic on it, especially for a team like this. But he read it, and yeah. Uh, I just I just couldn't get over it. I just I, I couldn't get over the game. I really couldn't, and uh, like I. I really got nothing else to say on it other than just just watching the replay with you guys and just I don't know why Sword Dance there. Oh right, no, I know I think I do re I do remember why Sword Dance is because I one I forgot he had Shadow Sneak. Two, I Sword Danced up. I don't know why I'm setting up against a stall team. Or no, that, no, no, normally that is the way to do it, but I just execute. I don't know why, but when it comes against stall teams, I or battling in general with a team that I'm not a hundred percent. This was also our week one, our week two battle. You would think by this point, by by, by the time we had our week two, that I'd be relatively used to the team, but I wasn't. I feel like I was more comfortable with the team on during week three, uh, which we will get into once this replay is done. Um, now the battle's almost over anyway, but man, like he was—he read me like a book. This game, he really did. I couldn't do any—I couldn't do anything to him. And it—it's sad because this is my four. This was my fourth time fighting him over the course of the last five seasons. And I will beat you, Bruno. I will. I will beat you, but. It's just unfortunately, it's just unfortunate that it wasn't this time around. So, as we get in, as we get into the last bit of it here, GG to Bruno. Um, it would, it would, it, it, it was a fun game. It was, it, it was a tad bit infuriating because you know it's just me and Stall just wasn't the great. It's like it's not the great. I hate playing against Stall. I really do, and for whatever reason, I just can't wrap my head around countering stall for whatever reason. Anyway, so yes, we ended up coming out with a loss in that in that game. So that puts uh, that puts us at this battle at zero and two. Um, next next on the list is my battle against Orange of the Frederick Klefkies. Now. Uh, first of all, before doing before doing before doing anything before doing anything, I want to switch sides. This game, this this game in particular, believe it or not, I'm looking at my notes for the I'm looking at my notes for this right now. This is the most note heavy match I've ever wrote in my entire life. The ba this battle before before I even start because this battle didn't go on as long as uh, as the match against Bruno. Before getting started into this, this was a match I should have won. This was this was also a match that I don't know how. I genuinely have no idea how. He knew that I was going to be running a certain set. Because I never, 
in, in, in my many, 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 like, my 20 years of playing Pokemon, this is the first time I've ever run a set like this. And it was all. I think it was also the time I. I think it was also the mo. The most amount of time I've ever had in prepping, like easily twelve plus hours over the course of like three days. But there are two main highlights to come out of this battle. The first is at turn five. And remember, I said before that. It was a set. It's a set that I don't normally run. Turn five is where is where you see that set. So I'm gonna start the replay, and I'm just gonna talk over it because turn five, turn five is the first time that I majorly deviated from my usual set with a zoom roll because I ran Parish Song. I never ran, I have never run a Parish Song before in my life. Or I say turn 5, it was more so turn 3. So, Finny is one of the tank, was one of the tankiest mons on his team. Uh, except for, uh, besides Mill Tank. And, what happened was that, so, actually, you know what? I'm going to pause the replay here. What happened was that... Uh, just in case you guys didn't see it... Was that... I I didn't realize that Azumarill could get Parasan. I knew it would get Whirlpool. I didn't know it would get Parasan. Tapu Fini is one of the... Uh, is one of the tankiest mons on his team. Next to, as you see on screen, Mill Tank. And I knew that I was going to be doing, and because I and I ran grassy terrain on Volplum, so that I could get rid of uh, Finny's Missy terrain. So terrain wasn't an issue, but I had Parasong mixed with Whirlpool, and the and what was funny was that we were t we we were talking about the game after the fact, and. One person ran a Parish Song Azumarill on him before, and it worked. But this is the first time that I've ever used any kind of set. Usually I go for either recovery or attack. That's basically it. For whatever reason, he knew that I was going to run Parish Trap Azumarill. I don't know how. The guy who helped him prep even went on record and and sent me a screenshot. He said, "Yeah, I even told him not to run not to run Shed Shell Finny because he never uses uh, he never uses Parasong. His own prep told him not to use it, and he used it. I don't know how. I really genuinely don't know how." He knew I was going to run Parasong on Tabu Fini. And it still boggles my mind today. Like, the match, like this match was like two weeks ago. Or, la this no, this match was la uh, yeah, two weeks ago. And somehow he knew that I was going to run Parasong Azumarill. All because one guy before in, in another league ran it before. I don't know if it was another league or if it was uh, previous season. But he ran it before. And only because of that he knew that I would run it. Even though I never, never, absolutely never run sets like that. So to this day it still boggles my mind. I really don't understand it. But it is what it is. We're going to move on. Uh, the next bit of notes that I have is... Uh, was on turn 15 when um, was when I sends out Cobalion against his mill tank. So well, so essentially what ended up happening was that Cobalion was my win condition. 
I didn't have anything against Finny, which was the whole reason why I ran Paris Trap Azumarill. But everything else that I had, er everything else that he had, Cobalion could kill. Basically. So, on turn 13, I used Sword Stance. Right here. So he used a Seismitas, that's fine. I ran Sword Stance. At this point, at this particular point, because I have a plus two attack up, everything I would have done would kill. It would kill everything on his side of the field. Except for his Finny. His Finny, I would have had to do, uh, like, I, ha I still have Volplum. So, as you saw on that on that specific turn on turn 14, I sword stance. He switches out. That's fine. I have my I have my, I have Cobalion prepped now to go ham on anything that he has. On this particular turn, turn 14, he protects, which is fine. I hit the Stone Edge and hit went through his protect. That turn there. That turn right there was the game ender. I'm telling you this right now. Because I missed that stone edge, RNG Jesus decided to take me by the ass and said, nope, you ain't doing this. I missed the stone edge. He hits overheat, kills him. Now my wet condition is gone. I had two options. I had I had two options at that point. I had Stone Edge, which was probably the worst possible choice. Now that I'm think now that I, but I still I had Sacred Sword. He had Fighting MZ. Cobalion had Fighting MZ. So I I had three I had three options. I could use Z Sacred Sword, which which would be Allo Pommeling. But, Allo Pummeling, or sorry, I had two options. Allo Pummeling only had like a 30% chance of killing, or at least in terms of what my what my calculations was telling me. I had 30% chance of kill. Or Stone Edge for a guaranteed kill. So I went with Stone Edge, and I missed. It's an 80... Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, Stone Edge has an 80% accurate rate. 80%. And I miss. And because now my main attacker is dead, the rest of the game basically played out like this. And... The only other chance I had to winning the game was making sure Volplume stayed alive. Because I gave, because I gave uh, Refragia, Refragia the Volplume, I made sure that he had as much coverage as possible. Uh, the reason for that was because um, Finny, Finny wasn't going to be an issue because I had um, Giga Drain. Um, I the only other, the only thing I did not have. Was something for Rotom. Lycan Rock would have died. I believe I also had um, da uh, D Dazzling Gleam, so I so I had something for Halucha. But oh my god! Um, but unfortunately, it didn't end up the way it. Now I did have. I went with a. Uh, um. I did go for a um, um, an offensive Volplume. Normally, I don't run offensive Volplume, nor do I run Volplume at all. But it was my only thing against Finny besides Azumarill. And I had, like I said before, I had grassy. I had the grassy terrain on it, and the game basically ended up being like this. So, 
I don't have any other words to explain it. I should have won that game. Stone, the Stone Edge miss, especially, was what cost me the game. But it's the game. It's the game that we play, unfortunately. And our RNG just basically looked at me and said, "No, you ain't winning this game." But you know what? That's fine. It's the game that we play, and unfortunately, I made the I made the terrible call in using Stone Edge. Now I know after after the game, uh, I was telling my girlfriend about it, and she asked me, she's like, "Well, why did why didn't you why didn't you run uh, Rock Slide instead?" I looked up Cobalion's move set after the fact, and I showed her that it doesn't get Rock Slide; it only gets three Rock moves. Stealth Rock, Rock Polish, and Stone Edge. So I didn't have any choice in terms of the moves to. I didn't have much. I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have much else to use. I didn't have much. So the game basically just played out like this, and I'm just. I'm, I'm watching along with you guys. It's just, now, effect spore did kind of effect spore did work there because he would have killed me, but it is what it is. It's the game that we play, and, unfor and unfortunately, the the gods just didn't want me to win that game. That's fine. That is, uh, it is what it is. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. That it's just it, it just is what it is, and uh, GG to to Orange. Now, last, certainly not least, our week four game against Gamer. Now, this game in particular is funny. It's, it, it's, it's funny to me because. After the massive prep that I did for Orange, um, yeah, after the massive prep I did for Orange, um, I could not get myself in the mindset to uh, to prep for uh, to prep for game for for gamer. So this was what I came up with. Now. I don't have much. I don't have much to say on it. So we're just going to hit play, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna talk over my notes. So, like I said, I had a hard time prepping for gamer uh, solely because of the amount of prep. Oh, actually, that turn that turn in particular, I want to talk about um, when I send out Zapdos. Yeah, this turn in particular, turn two into turn three. That turn in particular, I want to talk about. So, um, Zapdos had uh, had a single beam. At this point, I was thinking that Marowak may have Stone Edge. May. Now, based on my calculations. Zapdos was faster, and because Zapdo and because Zapdos was faster, I had two options. I was thinking that Marowak was going to. I, I figured Gamer was going to switch to uh, Tyranitar because Tyranitar is pretty much the only thing that, or beside besides Marowak itself, was the only basically was the and Cloyster was the only thing that could take Zapdos. So I was thinking he was going to use Tyranitar, so I hit Signal Beam. Initially, I was going to hit Volt Switch, just to see if he does switch. Or I was hoping he was going to switch into Tyranitar. While... Now, if, if he didn't switch, and Marowak used a Stone Edge, Zapdos, yes, would have died, 
but at least then it would have had some sort of jet damage done. Instead, what ended up happening was that he sends out Malamar and I use Signal Beam, killing Malamar in one hit. Okay. I wasn't expecting the read, and I found out after the Stone Edge didn't kill. That Stone Edge wasn't going to kill. So, Zapdos definitely did his job. Um... Other than that, the battle kind of went was kind of going back and forth for a bit until near the until near the end of the game. Um, and Comfy in particular, I made Comfy uh, made. I was making sure I was making use of uh, Comfy's uh, triage ability. Because I gave it Giga Drain, I gave it um, Draining Kiss, I also gave it HP Ground, just so that it has something to take on Electric, uh, just something to take on uh, ev basically everything. <coughs> but the game kind of, kind of went back and forth, and. No, he did. He did get the flinch there, so I'm just like, okay, that's a thing. Uh, at this point, it was Incineroar and Cabalion, and I'm, I was kind of glad that it was Incineroar and Cabalion because Cabalion had Volt Switch, so I was able to constantly make sure that Incineroar always uh, always had the uh, the fake out and the. Um, uh, the fake out and the intimidate drop every time, uh, and it 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 kind of worked out, especially when I had the assault S on um, on Incineroar. It and mixed that in with Cobalion's resistances, it worked. It worked out, and it it was crazy. I also had U turn on um, Incineroar just so that I could keep. Incineroar alive as much as possible, and the game just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand, I, I somehow played well that game, especially with the, with the single, with the single beam Zapdos against Alomar, but we ended up with a win in that game, our first win of the season, um, but it was an excellent game, it was, co it was constantly back and forth, and, um, and I'm glad we came out. With, I'm, I'm glad we came out with a win in that particular game because it was immediately after the game um, against Orange with the uh, with uh, me missing Stone Edge the previous game. So I'm kind of so I'm kind of happy I did come out of the game. Uh, I did come out with a win the following game, and um, and uh, and GG to Gamer. Because he did put up, a, he did put up a good fight. It only came down to me being able to constantly switch out into Incineroar and Cobalion in order to make sure, and basically to keep him guessing whether I'm going to switch or whether I'm going to use superpower or whatever. And it worked out, and I'm glad it worked out. So we are now one and three. Um, yeah, we are one and three in the uh, our record right now. So hopefully we get more wins as the season goes on. Hopefully, um, because I'm still a tad bit bummed out about the game against Orange, and it it's getting me to think more critically with my team. Now I know I didn't do that with uh, the game against Gamer because I was just so mentally burnt out from the match against Orange. But I'm glad that it worked out. I'm glad the game worked out the way it did. Um, so those are the matches that we ended up not uh, not having live matches from. I'm 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 praying that um, I'm hope I'm I am planning on getting mo uh, all the other games live. So that you guys can see my reactions and all that, rather than me doing replay analysis like this, because I prefer doing live. But it is what it is. We are now one and three, and yeah. So 
if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to leave this video a thumbs up like you never clicked it before and subscribe to the channel so that you guys don't miss it on any videos i've been chris the chaos gamer and i will see you guys in the next video